Today, I'm going to explain a Japanese comedy fantasy film called Symbol. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. At the start of the movie, a Japanese man wakes up in a mysterious white room with no recollection of how he got there. The large room is totally empty, with no doors or windows in it. The strange thing is that there is no ceiling as well, just an endless void of light coming from the top. Confused about the whole scenario, the man slowly gets up and starts inspecting the place. As he goes near the wall, he notices a peculiar looking thing sticking out. The man gives it a few rubs. That's what I would do. And then presses the tip, which suddenly causes thousands of baby angels to come out of the walls. They giggle maniacally for a few seconds and then disappear the same way they appeared. However, they do leave a gift for the man behind. They're peckers. Now, several thousand of these peckers are sticking out of the walls. Shocked by what he sees, and perhaps a little aroused, the man starts screaming at the top of his lungs. He also pleads for help, but as expected, no one replies. Once he is done with his mini outburst, he starts starts pressing the buttons randomly. To his surprise, every one of them dispenses a unique but random item, which ranges from a small toothbrush to a large bonsai plant. The man also learns that if he keeps on pressing the same button, the same item will be dispensed again and again. Several hours pass, and the room is filled with hundreds of random items. In particular, the man has made a pink ball his favorite, and as he is playing with it, he accidentally hits a button which dispenses some sushi. This makes the man happy, but he is also disappointed to learn that there is no soya sauce sauce. He presses some random buttons, but all he gets is more sushi. Fed up, he starts eating it just the way it is. However, once he is done, a bottle of soy sauce randomly pops up, infuriating him. But chug it. Later, the man gets a pair of 3D glasses, and when he tries them on, he sees a baby angel pointing towards his pecker. This excites the man, as he believes that he has found a way to escape. Unfortunately, when he presses that button, a giant ass appears from above and passes gas onto him, knocking him out. Several hours later, we see the man reading a particular manga. Turns out that he has already finished five volumes, but when he presses a button and asks for the sixth, the seventh volume comes out instead. Angry, he starts pressing random buttons, which dispenses the eighth, ninth, and 10th volumes. However, one of them surprisingly opens a mysterious door behind him. The man is over the moon that he has finally found a way to get out of this room, but in his celebrations, he forgets which button he pressed. So he again hits random buttons. One of them sends an African tribesman running into the room, while another makes water fall on his head. Finally, after a lot of failed attempts, he finds the button that opens the door. The man makes a run for it, but fails to enter in time, as the door only opens for a few seconds. This is when he he realizes that the tip of the button is instrumental in his escape. As soon as it rises, the door closes, so he will have to find a way to hold it down. The man then starts trying several ways to achieve this. At first, he presses the button with his leg and sits in a run-up position to give him a head start. However, it is still not enough to reach the door in time. Then he uses a cart to propel himself towards the door, but this plan is just as bad. He also tries using different objects like fly swatters, ropes, and even fans, but none of them yield any results. At last, he comes up with an idea to place the largest object in the room, a vase, over the button. He somehow drags it there and waits for the result, but to his dismay, the pointed pecker again proves to be too strong. It keeps rising despite the heavy weight on top of it. Not willing to give up, the man comes up with yet another plan. He decides to fill the vase with water to make it heavier. However, every time he presses the water button, it only falls on him instead of the vase. So the man reverts to filling the vase with sushi instead. After about an hour, the vase is finally filled, but it has become so heavy that the man is unable to move it. The vase's neck is also too narrow, so retrieving the sushi by hand is impossible. Hence, the man has no choice but to use chopsticks and retrieve the sushi one by one. This takes him a few more hours, and once he's done, he carries it near the button. However, by this time, the man has forgotten which button leads to the door. When he tries one, the African tribesman appears and accidentally bumps into the vase, breaking it into two. This sends the man into a state of shock and he starts screaming like a madman. Once he is done, he attempts some more ways to keep the button down, like burying it with sushi or covering it with tape. Unfortunately, none of them work, and the man finally gives up.
In the next scene, after waking up from a nap, the man decides to brush his teeth. He reaches for the water button but presses the wrong one, which sends a long rope from the ceiling. This makes the man happy as an idea strikes his mind. He uses the rope and swings across the room after pressing the button. To his delight, the plan works and he finally enters the door. <sighs> However, inside, he encounters another door with a lock on it. When all his attempts to open it fail, he returns to the room just before the door closes. The man is livid that he has failed once again, so he kicks the wall in frustration and inadvertently presses another button. To his shock, a key starts floating in the air, apparently the one that opens the secret door. However, just like the previous instance, it instantly vanishes when the pointed end of the button rises up. Now the man has to not only retrieve the key, but also open the first door. He will have to press two buttons and finish the task in seconds. The task is a momentous one, but the resilient man is not going to give up so easily. He uses the same rope and tries to swing his way to the other side and retrieve the key. However, he cannot generate enough velocity, because of which he stops midway. After multiple attempts, the man falls to the floor, and this is when he notices a plunger. This obviously gives him another cunning idea. He propels himself on the rope using the plunger, which finally helps him reach the key. Then he goes to the other side of the room, presses the button to the first door, and quickly swings there. In only the second attempt, he succeeds and happily enters the door. There, he quickly inserts the key into the second door and rotates it. However, it doesn't open. This is when he realizes that there is a second lock, which requires a three-digit passcode. Enraged, the man rushes out and throws the plunger in frustration. It strikes the wall and activates a button, which again releases the African tribesman. When the man stares at him, he surprisingly notices three digits on his forehead. Realizing that it is the passcode to the second door, he gets motivated and once again starts swinging. However, because he has limited time, he goes through the whole procedure thrice, each time for a number on the lock. At last, he finally unlocks the second door. It is a bit stuck, so he starts yanking it back, but at the same time, the first door closes. Now the man doesn't have enough room to open the second door, leaving him trapped in the dark, congested room. Hours pass by and his anger slowly turns into fear. He reminisces about the good times he spent in the other room, which was big and spacious and had peckers. He had all the amenities to live and entertain himself there, but he never appreciated it enough. Right then, the man feels a breeze coming through through the wall and notices that there is a crack in it. He pushes it and surprisingly, it slides right off. The man then exits the room and starts running with whatever energy he has left. Soon, he comes across a supernatural hallway that is floating in the dark. Every door appears to be identical, but the man keeps on running for hours and then days. The colors of his clothes have faded and his hair has grown substantially longer, but he doesn't stop. Finally, he arrives in a room much like the one he woke up in at the start of the movie. The only difference is that this room is dark and there are grown-up angels instead of babies. Soon, the door behind him closes and the angels also disappear into the walls, leaving only their buttons behind. Following this, we are taken to a rural village in Mexico, where a kid named Antonio lives with his family. His father, Escargo Man, who is a luchador wrestler by profession, is preparing for the big fight happening that night. It is revealed that a lot of people have put stakes on him, and that's why he is a bit nervous. However, little Antonio is confident that his father is going to win and bring pride to their family. Later, Escargo Man packs his belongings and heads to the venue. There, he changes into his fighting gear and starts praying. Soon, hundreds of people start gathering in the arena to witness the blockbuster match. Escargo Man's family also arrives, and they excitedly cheer him on from the stands. The announcer then calls the participants, which reveals that it is going to be a tag team match. Escargo Man is paired up with a novice wrestler, while their opponents are deadly veterans who have never lost a game. In the next scene, the match finally begins, and as expected, the deadly veterans gain an upper hand. They start punishing Escargo Man's partner right from the get-go, putting him in all sorts of locks and maneuvers. They even double up on the poor man, completely ignoring the referee's pleas. Then, they shift their attention to Escargo Man and begin pummeling him with solid blows. However, as they are about to finish him off with a steel chair to the dome, the Japanese man in the mysterious room presses a button, which causes Escargo Man's head to miraculously extend like a giraffe. This movie's script is basically just the ramblings of a child. Using the giraffe head, he easily knocks the two opponents down and wins the match, sending the audience into a state of frenzy. Meanwhile, in the mysterious room, the man doesn't notice any change, so he starts pressing random buttons. This causes Escargo Man to go crazy in Mexico. He knocks out his own partner, the referee Antonio, and even the match bell. On the other hand, the Japanese man continues pressing different buttons. While it doesn't do anything in the room, it causes a lot of changes throughout the world. 
In Los Angeles, while a rock band is performing a concert, the lead singer suddenly starts throwing fire from his mouth. In Russia, a magician falls to make his assistant disappear, leaving thousands of people disappointed. In China, a man who owns several dogs suddenly starts barking at them. All this while, the man still doesn't notice any changes, so he gives up. However, when he looks at the ceiling, he notices several angels flying around. This gives him one final idea. Instead of pressing the buttons, he uses them to climb the wall. Slowly but steadily, he moves towards the light at the end of the room, and every time he touches a button, something fascinating and distinct happens around the world. They range from very small things like fireworks in the sky, some kids practicing karate, an animal eating its prey, to very serious and big achievements like the fall of the Berlin Wall, the launch of Apollo 11, the first black president of the United States, and so on. At this point, both the man's beard and hair have grown very long. He also doesn't need to hold onto the buttons and can fly like the angels. Soon, he is surrounded by millions of feathers, and a glowing light surrounds him. The next second, he finds himself in a different room, which has the map of all the continents. Next to him is a huge pecker, which apparently has more surprises hidden within it. The movie ends as the man lunges forward to press it. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.